Welcome everyone to Jay Wolf Tech Broadcast. I got another system build here for you. And what I'm actually focused on here is going about picking certain components that I would choose if I was building a system around a set target price. My target price right now is going to be $1,200, which is $800 less than my previous build where we were focusing on the $2,000 range. This system is going to also include a monitor and OS, and it's going to include a keyboard, a very, very nice one if I can say so myself. With that being said, let's jump in. This is an MATX build. So you're gonna be able to move the system around. Let's say you wanna take it to a LAN party or you wanna hook it up to your TV and play maybe some FIFA or NBA 2K, which benefits from a larger format display. You'll be able to do that pretty easily. So let's jump in. The first is going to be the processor, the Intel Core i5 4590K quad core processor. It's right now priced at $190. And if you put a code in there, you can get it for 190. Uh, it's the current generation uh, processor and it's quad core, which is perfect for gaming. You're gonna be able to get a little overclocking on it, but not a ton, mainly because it's not a K unlocked processor. But honestly, you're not gonna be able to need to do that much for gaming, especially uh, with how well things are optimized right now. For the cooler, I went with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. This is honestly the best cooler for $28 that you can get out there. Probably one of the better air coolers, actually. The only negative thing about it is that the fan on there is not very good. I would swap it out and maybe put an octo fan on there, and it's going to produce really, really good uh, results. If you're not building a custom water loop or spend $150, $200 on a copper uh, pre-filled all-in-one system, this is the way to go. For $28, it's going to keep your system cool, especially your CPU. And it's very well recommended and well reviewed, for, especially for that $28 price point. For the motherboard, I went with Gigabyte Intel Z97. This is the, see the model number there. It is an MATX board, and the thing I like about it is that it's all black. Uh, Gigabyte makes great boards, and you're gonna be able to change the color in your system or your setup any way you want, because mainly because it's all black. So that's something to keep in mind. You're going to have as many USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports you could imagine. The only downfall um, that I can get into, but it is only $85. The only downfall is that there's only one PCI slot, so no Crossfire SLI, but honestly, I don't find that to be beneficial, especially for the price point. If you need a little bit beefier GPU, I usually recommend just upgrading to a newer generation one or a higher up model rather than throwing another card in there. So that's something to keep in mind, but for 85 bucks, this is a great uh, motherboard to get. For the memory, I went the Corsair Vengeance LP. This is an eight gigabyte two by four sticks. And it's running at 1600 megahertz. It's $47. That's mainly why I picked it for the price point. Corsair makes great uh, memory. Basically, Corsair makes a lot of great, just about everything. And it's all black, so you can be able to change the, the color of your system if you want. It's going to go really well with the motherboard. It's got a heat spreader on there, so it's going to run nice and cool. I mean, if you want to do a little bit of overclocking with it. But $47, that was the best price I could find, especially on 8 gigabytes of memory, which... Um, Memories came down a lot, especially DDR3 in price. Graphics card with the Asus Strikes. This is a 960. This is an excellent GPU in that it's running $200 right now. And I did a price on this about a, about a week ago, and it was up to the 219, 220 range. So you're getting it. These cards are slowly coming down now that the 980 Ti came out. For 200 bucks, this can be a great card, especially for 1080p gaming and for 1440p gaming. You should be able to do just about anything you want with modifying a few settings uh, within the game to make it run smooth and at 60 frames per second. So that is what I would pick up at that $200 price point. For the monitor, I actually went with the Acer, the G257HU, and this is probably the best thing in the system for the price point. For $250, you're gonna get a 1440p monitor. Normally, I would not recommend an Acer monitor, but this monitor is IPS. It has a four millisecond response time, uh, refresh time. And for that, no bezels, little to no bezels. It's very well reviewed. I checked it out on a few other websites that uh, did some good reviews on it and, 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 and tech. And I believe PC Per was the other one that really recommended this. For $250, you're getting a 1440p monitor. This monitor a couple years ago would be $700, $800. Uh, but before K monitors coming out, these monitors have really came down in price. So definitely pick that up if you're looking for a, a high quality 1440p monitor. 
For the storage, I went with the ADATA. This is the Premier Pro SP600. This is a 120 gigabyte SSD. Yes, it's a little bit older model, as in I believe that the 610s are out now. But for $50, you're gonna get 128 gigabytes of memory that you can put your OS on. You're gonna be able to put a couple games on, depending on the, the total uh, volume of that game. And you'll be able to put a lot of your programs on there so you can open them up quickly and get to running. That's the one I would pick. If I was looking for one right now, which I kind of am for my laptop, it's still got a hard drive in it. For 50 bucks, it's hard to beat that price point. And for larger storage, I went with the Western Digital one terabyte blue drive. These are, this is a well-recommended, well-reviewed hard drive for $53. It will go down a little bit. Sometimes you get it for that $45, $46 range, but it gets 4.6 stars out of five out of over 3,400 reviews. So pick that up for $53 and throw all your large, large storage you need on there. For the case, I went with Corsair Obsidian 350D, and I did go with a refurbished uh, unit here, which normally I would not recommend, but since it's Corsair, I trust them. I've bought a few refurbished products from them, and they came and looked almost almost new. For 70 bucks, we're gonna get a $100 case that still comes with, I don't know if it's a lifetime warranty or five-year warranty. So you're still getting a five-year limited warranty on the system and it's refurbished and you're saved 30 bucks, I would pick that up. Normally I don't recommend refurbished cases, but I trust Corsair and they're well known. They got great customer service. So if you have any problems, probably contact them and, and uh, get it figured out pretty quickly. Power supply, I went with the Corsair CX600M. This is a $45 power supply. It is semi-modular and it's an 80 plus bronze and it's got the Corsair name with it. So you're gonna get a high quality power supply for a very cheap price for $45. It's gonna be able to run our system easily without any hiccups. So that's what I'd pick up. And for Windows, Windows 7, Windows 8, doesn't matter. It's 90 bucks for Windows 8.1. You'll be able to get a free copy of Windows 10 when it comes out also, which is coming out here soon. A lot of people recommend the Linux, but 99% of the games out there require Windows for running. So pick up a Windows copy. Um, Sometimes you'll get them for 65, 70 bucks, depending on what price point uh, or sales they got going on. But that's the budget we allowed for that. For the keyboard, this is kind of a personal preference. I really like Ducky keyboards. This is a mechanical Ducky Shine 3. This is MX Blue Switch with RGB blue backlit. Uh, the only negative about it, it is running $100, which is $40 less than what it normally runs, mainly because the Shine 4s are out. So that's something to keep in mind, but it is missing the number pad, which is gonna be great, I think, for the system, considering it's an MATX. You're gonna to wanna to move it around from time to time, in theory, so you can take it to the LAN party. These things are really compact keyboards. It is a full-size keyboard, and Ducky makes some of the nicest keyboards out there. I'm personally running one that I've actually been using for, I think this is like seven or eight years old. It's a really old keyboard. It's not anything fancy, it's just mechanical blue switch keyboard. So pick that up for $100. And that puts our grand total at $1,207. I went over budget a little bit, but honestly, I think for what you're getting in here, a good monitor, a good keyboard, an OS is included. It's a great system. I would personally buy all this stuff if I needed a system for that $1,200 price point, especially a smaller system that you'll be able to move around from time to time. So that's it guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd improve. Maybe jump up, jump down, get a higher end CPU, higher end GPU, bump up the price point or cut it down. You can get a cheaper case. If you wanted to do that, let me know and I will see you guys next time. And I hope you guys have a great day. Weekend actually, it's Friday.